Hello my fellow Freedom Builders and welcome back to the channel. My name is Hans Nilsson and today we're gonna look at indicators. Many of you have written to me and asked me about different indicators and I've decided to make a little indicator school with a number of episodes where I go through some of the uh, most widely used indicators out there when doing technical analysis. Now, first of all, let's just remember what we're talking about here. An indicator, let's just go to a chart uh, in a hurry here. Uh, I have uh, pulled up Tesla uh, and normally we are just looking at a price chart here. We can see all of these price fluctuations here. Every bar of these candlesticks is one day. Now what is uh, an indicator and what can it do for us? Well, there are a million different indicators and it is, remem it is, it is important to remember what an indicator is. And it kind of says so in the word indicator. It is something that indicates something. So it's not, it's not a magical tool that can make us forever profitable, uh, whatever stock we're trading. It is an indicator that can indicate something about uh, price changes or trend or something else. But what it is, is just a mathematical calculation using the price using some time, maybe sometimes using a bit of volume, but that's all. It is just using the information you already have in your chart. That said, it can be very helpful uh, and um, let's have a look at it. Up here in TradingView, which is my favorable um, or, or favorite tool when I'm doing a technical analysis, up here we have this um, F thing here uh, and we can see this is indicators and strategies. When we are pressing this one, we are getting a ton of different things in here, but you should have the buildings. And today we're gonna look at RSI or relative strength index. So now we have it on the chart. Now in a minute, I'll go back to the slideshow and I'll tell you a bit how this is calculated, but this is how an indicator could look now the RSI, the relative strength index, is an oscillator uh, and that can give us some uh, useful information. But I'll show you five different ways of how to use the RSI in different combinations today. So if you stick to the end of the video, I'll give you all of the ways that I'm using it in my daily trading. But first of all, before using an indicator, I usually recommend that you know just a little bit about how it is calculated because no indicators work all the time and um, therefore it is important to know how it is constructed because that gives you an idea of when it stops working. So let's get over to the slideshow and I'll just give you a bit of math. It's not complicated but uh, stick uh, to it please so that you know how the R RSI is calculated. If you simply hate math then you can forward a couple of minutes and you can get to the chart part here. But I recommend that you just take a, a little while to learn the, the formula as well. Just a second. All right, here we are with the RSI formula. The RSI as in relative strength index. It is important to differentiate between this RSI and then the normal uh, relative strength that we are using called CRS, uh, comparative relative strength. The CRS is comparing, uh, for instance, Tesla's price development to the index S&P 500. Whereas when we are talking the RSI formula, we are comparing the, the, the stock to its own price development. So we're only looking at Tesla right now. Now the formula here is saying RSI equals 100 minus 100 divided by 1 plus RS. And to find out what RS is, we need to take the average gain over X number of periods divided by average loss over X number of periods. Now let's give, let me give you an example so that you're not completely overwhelmed by the math here. Um, let's go to the formula here. Let's say that over the last 14 days, um, all of the up days, all of the days where Tesla have gained in price, the average gain there per day is 10%. Whereas the average losing day, this is the winning day, the average losing day is 2%. Then we divide these two, 10 divided by two equals five. All right, so far so good. 
Now this is the formula. The RSI minus 100 divided by 1 plus RS, and we know that RS is 5. So now we have a calculation here. Now we have RS equals 100 minus 100 divided by 6. That gives us 100 minus this number here is 17. That gives us an RSI of 83. Now, if we are looking at the chart, we can see that this RSI indicator, let's see if we can see it here, it is going from 0 to 100. That is the outer limit here. So if we have had a period like this one here, where the last winning days have an average of 10% and the last losing days have had an average of 2%, that is a very strong momentum upwards where the winning days are moving 10% up and the losing days are only losing 2%. Now this is just a, a fantasy example here, but that's just to give you an, a picture of this. But this is a very strong up momentum. And instead of having to calculate that in our head all the time, we can read it in this RSI line that when it is up here, we can see here that the RSI was up at 93. Um, and we can see that here we have very strong price momentum where the winning days are 7% and we have a winning day here with 2.5 and 10.3 and 1.5 and almost 20%. So you can see that all of these days are the up days are very large and the losing days are not at all uh, that large at all. So that makes the RSI very high in this period. And normally when we're looking at an indicator or at least an indicator like RSI, we have this outer limits and I'll get back to them in a second. But the default settings when we're talking about the RSI is that we are talking, we're looking 14 periods back, meaning that when we are at a daily chart, that is 14 periods back. If we were looking at a four hour chart, it would be 14 times four hour back. So we have the 14 periods and we have these outer limits set at uh, a score of 70 and 30. That's the default. We can always change that, but let's just uh, leave them right now. And let's get back to the slideshow because now we're getting to the meat of this because I'm going to show you the different ways that RSI can be used to make a profit. So let's have a see here. Way to invest with RSI. I have listed five different ways here and there are probably more, but these are just the, at least the, the three, uh, three or four uh, top line here, uh, the three actually, one, two and three, are they the most widely used? What I actually do is that I use number four and number five um, uh, for, the, for the most part, but that is just because I like them more and I like to be a bit odd. So I guess you'll figure that out already. But let, let's take them one at a time. The overbought, oversold. Now, this entire concept of overbought, oversold comes from the theory that nothing can go up forever and nothing can go down forever. So when we are looking or when people tr investing with RSI, uh, when they're talking about overbought and oversold, they're talking about that this indicator, it could be RSI, it could also be another one, uh, has reached a level where it, from a statistical point of view, would be strange if it kept going up. And on the other hand, if it go goes below 30, then from a statistical point of view, it would be strange if it kept going down. But let's just have a look at it here. Because when I say from a statistical point of view, um, that means that when we were up at the overboard, it kind of signals that now it has gone up so much, it simply cannot go up any further. But you can see here, Tesla was at around 370 here, and it just kept going up and up and up and up. And it actually uh, went up uh, 200, 300% more uh, from the point where we got a signal that now we are overboard. So some people think that they can use the RSI by saying that we are going to buy when it is below 30 and we're going to sell when it is above 70. I would not recommend that. Um, that is not really, a, 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 at least it, it takes very strict testing and, and adding uh, and uh, some other tools to it 
because as you can see, once in a while you're getting a stock like Tesla where you would have sold it here, uh, you would have sold it here, uh, and then you would have had no way of getting into it all of the way up here. You would have missed this entire um, the trip up. Then, of course, you could say that uh, you could have gotten in here. That would actually been have been a very nice way uh, or place to, to get in. So, of course, sometimes it is correct. But you have to be careful because stocks are very, very different. And there might be stocks where this overbought, oversold is absolutely perfect. And there are some where it is absolutely horrible. So you need at least to have a look at if you have decided for yourself that you want to buy when uh, the, the RSI is down here below 30. I would recommend that you look a bit back and to see has that been a, a profitable strategy before in this stock. Because some stocks is just work, it's working like a charm. Uh, it's just moving straight up here from an uh, oversold to an overbought and straight up down from an overbought to an oversold. And then of course you can short it on the way down and so on and so forth. But in stocks like Tesla, it would be absolutely uh, a horrible strategy to, to use here. But it's just to say that this is one of the ways to use it. Uh, it is to use the overbought and oversold. Then again, there are actually uh, I haven't mentioned that here, but there are actually some uh, statistical uh, research saying that it can be a good way of trading to buy when the stock is getting uh, above 70 here. So you would have bought here and then to sell when it drops below 70 up here. Now that would be an entirely uh, better deal here with Tesla. But then again, there would be other stocks where that would be horrible. So there's there's no what there's not one single indicator that can give you the holy grail trading system thing uh in in every stock at any time frame uh, in all markets i know there are someone trying to sell it out there saying that they have this fantastic indicator uh, it is giving you a 97 percent win rate and uh, you're going to be a billionaire within the week well it doesn't exist uh remember that an indicator indicates. If an indicator could tell you anything with 100% certainty, it would not be called an indicator. It would, it would be called a fortune teller or a time machine or whatever. It would not be an indicator because it would not indicate anything it would tell you for certain. And it doesn't. So uh, I love using indicators, but another little uh, pitfall here we should be careful not to drop into is that if you find somehow uh, to use the RSI and it makes us a profit. And we are thinking, wow, if I can make a profit with one indicator, imagine what I could do with two. And if that makes you a little profit, then you are putting another indicator on and another and another. And all of a sudden, uh, you are simply having so many indicators in your, ch in your chart that you cannot figure out where the price is. So I really recommend that if you're using indicators, use a few, one or two and, um, I'll get back to that later on in the indicator school. But let's get back to ways to invest with RSI because then there is the 50 line cross. And that's also uh, that has a bit of a variation of this buying when it is getting above 70. There are some traders that actually like to um, trade. Let's just see here. Let's put a midline in here around 50 here. They like to use the 50 line as a signal line so that they are buying when it is crossing up above the 50 line and selling when it is crossing down. Again, in a stock like Tesla here, where uh, we are just seeing some very good and nice clean trends, it can be um, it can be a bit deceiving to look at this because we can see, wow, almost all my trades have made a profit. But remember, you need to look at different time frames. Um, when, when you're testing an, an indicator, you have to look at, at difficult times, uh, the times where the market is going sideways, so times where the market is trending up and down uh, really violently, uh, volatile markets, non-volatile markets. You need to test it in all sorts of environments to make sure that you're not just uh, that you haven't find, found an indicator that works just right now, because I could easily see here well, I could have made a little break even here, but then I would have bought down here at 240 and wow, 
I would have been in here up until 673. Now my fortune is uh, for certain I can go out and order my new Ferrari and Porsche and whatever I want to, to drive in. But it is not that easy because if it was, everybody would do it. And uh, well, then there would be no profit in it because it would lose its edge. So um, crossing the 50 line as a, just that simple strategy, that's not really my favorite as well. All right, then there's something called divergence. And that is actually a thing where I, I know a couple of traders uh, having great profit using divergence. And what is divergence? Now, divergence is where you are looking at the price charts and you compare it with the indicator chart. So down here, for instance, uh, we have a, a good sign of divergence here. If it turns out with a, to give a profit, I have no idea. But what divergence is, is that we are taking a look at the tops here and we can see that we have rising tops, higher tops here, uh, one top, a little bottom, and then one top again. And when we are looking at the indicator chart, we can see that we have one top here and one top here. So let's just make sure here with an arrow, we can see that this top matches this one and this top matches this one. All right, so when we can see that we have higher tops in the price chart, but we have lower tops in the, uh, in the indicator chart, it actually tells us that it might be time to uh, take some profit or move our stop loss uh, up. And uh, right now, well, we can see right now we have the 12th of May 2020. So we can see now in the in, in the future chart. Now I can't tell the future, but if the divergence here should work, um, it would indicate that we should move lower here. Again, I do not recommend that you just trade out of this uh, as the uh, as the only thing to trade from. But uh, the divergence here is absolutely something that I know a lot of traders are uh, looking at. Let's just see if we can have a, find another one. It is a bit hard here, but they are all over the place if you look for them. And this is on a daily chart, but they are also to be found on a on a weekly chart. I don't use it so much myself, but as I said, I know several traders that actually have this divergence trading as one of their uh, main tools in their toolbox. But then they use something else. They might have uh, some trend lines uh, drawn into this and saying, well, when we're seeing a divergence here, I also need to see some sort of confirmation. So I need to see some sort of breakdown here, maybe a little retracement and then what is called a kiss goodbye. Um, but it all started with the divergence and then we need to, to, to see some more confirmation. Uh, that is one of the patterns that I know one of my friends are trading from. Uh, that is mostly day trading in, in the currency market, but this indicator can be used uh, all over the place. All right. Let's get back to this one. That was the top three. Now, if you have been following me for a while and you have seen the videos in the playlist called uh, Learn My Strategy, you know that I actually use this one, the trend stability uh, above 50 line. Uh, and now what does that mean? What that means is that, well, I'm not buying a stock simply because it is above its own uh, 50 line here. What I do is that I mostly actually look at the weekly chart. I have that here and we can just draw in the 50 line as well here. About there. So what I'm doing is that um, I'm saying that as long as the stock on a weekly chart with a 14 uh, period time frame here on the RSI, as long as uh, the, the, the stock can, can hold itself above 50 on the RSI here, then we are in an uptrend and I'm allowed to look for entries and then I time my entries on the daily time frame. But that means that from on a daily time frame, I can start looking at, oh, it doesn't go all the way up here, but I can start looking uh, for entries on the daily chart here. And then uh, I get a sell signal. You can see that if we are only using the uh, the weekly chart, then we lose a lot of our profit here in the Tesla uh, stock. Uh, we might have gotten in at 250, but we were 
uh, in it all the way down to 412. And remember, I also use all the tools I have our comparative relative strength and so on. But um, then it went up again and uh, was above 50 from here. And uh, we could be on the uh, trip up from here as well in an uptrend. As long as it is above 50, it tells me that over the last 14 weeks, we have had more buying power than selling power, meaning that I like to be in the stock. Then, of course, uh, we can we can use that uh, to combine here with the multiple time frames because I, I use a combination of number four and number five. So what I look for is I look for uh, the stock to be above 50 on the RSI here on the weekly chart. But then I go in here and I try to time my trades, meaning that let's just make it a bit clearer here. Um, here we can see the two green, the two first green lines here. That's where we are allowed to look for, uh, for, for, for trends or for trades uh, where that we can exit. And let's say that the, um, that the Tesla stock actually also fulfilled our, uh, our, uh, criteria where it had to be stronger than the overall market. I'm pretty sure it did. Then we can go in here and we can have a look and say, how can we time this how can we try to get in at the best possible uh, point and of course we could be lucky to be in here but i do like a bit of confirmation so what i like to see um is that when we have this area where i know that it is above 50 the rsi is above 50 on the weekly chart and i can see we are going up 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 and then we are seeing a retracement here then i'm looking down here and see if the stock can make a retracement in price um, and then a move up. Now, this was a very violent move up because of the earnings. Normally, it's not that violent. But now we see a move up and I'm looking down here at the RSI and I'm seeing that at no point it did it cross the 50 line on a daily chart. Then I'm considering buying the stock here. I'm never getting in right at the bottom. That is because I'm looking for confirmation. If you didn't get in here, uh, you can let it ride for a while, looking for a retracement and see, did it break the 50 line here on the daily chart? No, it didn't. All right. So as soon as we are seeing a little buying power here, all right, we can get in a Tesla again here. I know this is a very convenient example since um, the, the trend just uh, kept going up here. But let's just uh, for the instance over here, uh, we're having a little retracement here. Uh, we were no, nowhere near breaking the 50 line here, so we could get in uh, uh, again here uh, at 4.30. Uh, we could, might have been able to get in here at 5.50. Um, I do like to see, actually, uh, when I'm looking at this trend, I do like to see the RSA dropping a bit below the 70 line, but that's just me. But it has to keep above the 50 line, so uh, an entry like this would be perfect. And then you can use this 50 line to say, well, even though it hasn't broken the 50 line on the weekly chart, then when it breaks the 50 line here on the daily chart, I'm starting to look for a possible exit. Uh, it's not that I sell the instance that I, uh, that I get the break here, because sometimes it is what is called a fake out. It, it, is, it is only fake and it just keeps going up. And you don't want to lose 100 or 200% more just because you got scared here. So uh, it went down, but then it went up again above the 50 line, but then it turned down again and uh, below the, fi uh, the 50 line, meaning that we could have gotten out around here, around 70, uh, 700, uh, and we were getting in maybe around 350. So we were getting 100% here in the move. We were not getting the entire move, but we were getting a good chunk of it. And um, well, let's have a look again here. We saw uh, before on, on the uh, weekly chart that uh, here from the 13th of April, uh, it was in an uptrend uh, again on our weekly chart, meaning that we can start looking for an uptrend, a little retracement, um, and then a move up again here around 790. Uh, we are above the 50 line here. Um, and well, right now it is in a, in a little profit if we had taken it 
depending on, of course, what your entry criteria is. It's just one green bar here. Do you want to see some, some good solid move up? You might have just gotten in uh, here at 794. So you're only up a couple of percent right now. But this would be an okay buy signal somewhere up here because we're in a, a buy area on the weekly chart. And then we see a little retracement and a move up on the daily chart. Uh, but without breaking the 50 line. So that is a combination of that trend stability above the 50 line uh, compared with multiple time frames. Of course, you can go even further down. Now I'm looking at a daily chart here. You could go down to a, a, a four hour chart and try to time it there. If, if you're a day trader, you could go down to, to the daily chart and saying, uh, well, now I'm allowed to buy so I can enter here and then I can write it up as long as the RSI is above 50 here. There are a ton of different options and I'm just using Tesla here because it is nice and trendy, but it is important that you also uh, try and test it with uh, with less clean stocks. Um, and there are a ton of them as, as well. But of course, there will be stocks where you're really taking a lot of losses because you're getting whipsawed in a market where you're just getting a buy uh, signal and, and then down through the 50 line and a buy signal and down through the 50 line. So there'll always be stocks and there'll be time periods where it is more difficult. But this is just an example of how I uh, make my normal day to day investing. So I'm also, as you know, looking at the CRS, the comparative relative strength. I already made a, a video about that. And uh, I'm looking at uh, regression channels where I do like to buy mostly when the stock is in the bottom of the channel, because I know there's there's more probability of moving up there. I'm having a couple of moving averages on. And I'm also looking at some of the fundamentals. So for instance, a stock like Tesla, you can swing trade. But the fundamentals, I don't really like them. So I'm more into uh, the, the more solid stocks. Uh, so I'm not just picking stocks out of technical analysis. I am mostly using good solid stocks. And then I'm using different technical tools to time my trade. But just remember what I'm saying here. And that is very important because I know I'll get all sorts of hate messages here. I am not trying to predict where anything is going because no one can predict anything about the market. What I am is that I am finding trends that is running where I can see the big players are in because the, the weekly chart is moving. And then I'm trying to move in um, conjunction with the uh, with the smaller traders or the shorter term traders to get a bit of a better entry. It's not always possible and sometimes uh, a stock just goes straight up and I get no retracement where I can, can get in. And that's, of course, uh, extremely annoying because then I have missed a, a, a big move here. But uh, I am I have tested th this method and I have been investing and trading it over s several years. And it is a very, very it is a very good fit for my uh, um, uh, investing style and for my mentality and psychology. But other people are more aggressive or more conservative and they can use completely other setups. It's just important that you test it for yourself, that you use your own common sense. And uh, first of all, that you don't listen to me because I'm not a financial advisor. So you should never take financial advice from me. This is just the indicator school. I'm telling you how the indicator is working, how it is calculated. And I hope that you found some uh, inspiration here as to how you can go about in your own trading, own investing uh, to get the best possible results. That's all for now. If you haven't done already, remember to push that subscribe button. If you like the content, also push the like button and all of the buttons you can find down there. And uh, I'll talk to you again soon. Take care of yourself and your money out there. Bye for now.